This is MSJ Chem. In this video, I'll be taking a quick look at physical equilibrium. So we'll start by looking at the difference between physical equilibrium and chemical equilibrium. Physical equilibrium differs from chemical equilibrium in that it involves a change of state rather than a chemical reaction. So next we look at an example. In this stoppered flask, we have a volume of water. The flask is a closed system which means that matter cannot escape. The water in the flask will start to evaporate. At the same time, the water vapor will start to condense. There are two processes occurring in the flask, water evaporating and the water vapor condensing. At a certain point in time, the rate of evaporation is equal to the rate of condensation and the system is at equilibrium. At equilibrium, the rate of evaporation of the water is equal to the rate of the condensation of the water vapor. At this point in time, the liquid level will remain constant. This physical equilibrium can be represented by this equation. So we have liquid H2O evaporating to form gaseous H2O and gaseous H2O condensing to form liquid H2O. This is what is meant by physical equilibrium. Note there is no chemical reaction occurring, only a change in state. Finally, we look at other examples of physical equilibrium. The first example is the evaporation of bromine. So in this equation, liquid bromine is evaporating to form bromine vapor, and bromine vapor is condensing to form liquid bromine. As we can see in the flask on the right, at equilibrium there is no change in macroscopic properties such as color. The second example is the sublimation of iodine. Solid iodine undergoes sublimation to form gaseous iodine and gaseous iodine undergoes deposition to form solid iodine. We can see this in the flask on the far right. Like chemical equilibrium, physical equilibrium only occurs in a closed system. Also, at equilibrium, the rate of the forward process is equal to the rate of the reverse process.